Hey guys, this is Aquarius 7373. Um, I want to show you a build that I'm working on, which is a solar panel briefcase. So with this briefcase, standard size, 18 inches by 12 inches, about three and a half, four inches thick. I want to be able to keep everything that I ever need with me. Basically, a man purse that doesn't look like a purse. Uh, all my devices, but I want to make it myself. I'm going to make it out of wood and I want a solar panel built into the front of it and I'm also going to need a backup battery so right now I'm going to show you a couple of my prints and my drawings that I made um, to help design this and then for a, throughout the rest of the video I've got my video editing software here so it's actually already fully made I'm inserting this at the beginning so that you know what to expect I'm going to have uh, shortcut times at the bottom so that you can skip to whatever section of the video that you want to see and how I made each part if you want to sit through the entire thing Right now it's about, it's just over 40 minutes long. So if you want to watch the whole thing, great. If you want to skip to certain parts, go for it. Um, in this video I'm not going to have the final product, but it, uh, the second video in this playlist is going to have my final product. Um, and there I'm going to talk about the voltage, the amperage, how everything works, um, how long it takes to charge the battery, everything like that, and honestly how it looks. and. It actually came out pretty good. It came out almost as good as I expected. This took me probably a total of two weeks, um, a few hours to like six hours every day. So it took quite a bit of time. A lot of it was waiting on shipping and everything. Um, it cost me about twice as much as I expected. Um, so honestly, I can't make it like this again to make a profit, but it was still a fun build and maybe you learned something from the video. So I hope you enjoy. The papers that I want to show are here, I think I show this a little bit later in the video about how amperage and voltage and wattage works. Here's my layout from series to parallel and how I get uh, the exact current that I want. Here's my drawing, hopefully, of uh, exactly how it's going to turn out. Dimensions aren't correct anymore and some of the drawing illustrations isn't dead on, but that was my initial drawing from a few weeks ago. Uh, some more drawings, lots of numbers, took um, quite a bit of designing. Here in the grid paper I have my solar array layout and how I'm going to have it hooked up to a um, uh, car cigarette lighter going to my battery. So I'll talk about that later on in the video. Actually I think that's going to be my next video. And then my liner design so I can cut that out from the laser and actually line the inside of the case. So that's all for now. Hope you enjoy. All right, so here's the layout for my solar panel. I uh, just laser engraved these lines on the paper so that I can lay it out perfectly with the right spacing. And what I really want to show you right now is cutting this tabbing wire. It's really thin stuff to the perfect length so that it goes from one side down to the other without being a little bit too long. You've got to make sure it's not too long but it also has to be long enough. So that's the perfect length and the way I'm doing this is um, if you got a piece of cardboard or plastic with your solar cells then use that but mine didn't come with that it was just wrapped in plastic. Um, actually it was just in a plastic bag so you just take your tabbing wire, cut a long piece of it, five feet or whatever, and just keep on wrapping it around kind of tight because you want them all to be about the same size. And then once you slide that off the edge, you just snip a little bit off the very end of them. A couple of these didn't cut well. But now, they should all be the perfect length. Or at least close enough to work with. It should be just under double the length of my two cells. Which it is. So that's how you do that. 
Okay, so now I'm adding the tabbing wire to the cells. I want to make sure you try not to touch the surface of the cell, which is the negative side or the front side. I get fingerprints on it and it's never going to look right again. So, the guy that I bought this from told me I was going to be getting one of the flux pens. For some reason I got this little bottle and a Q-tip instead. Um, They just <clears throat> I think there wasn't enough flux on there and it evaporated too quickly. Seems like you don't really have a lot of time to work with this. Because that first tab always sticks just fine, then when I go to do this side, sometimes it doesn't stick closer to the bottom end. So in the next part of the clip, I'm going to show you how to do the back side. Okay, so now I'm going to start running them together. I already have three piles here. And what I noticed was that using um, this liquid flux stuff versus the stuff that comes like that is the liquid doesn't discolor like this. Well, not as much anyway. This is what I did with the liquid. And a couple of them, and this one you can obviously tell was not with the liquid. That was with the thicker, regular flux that you get at like Home Depot. So now I'm just going to show you how I run these together. On the back side, um, you don't have to worry about it discoloring, so. I like this better because it doesn't evaporate so quickly. So you just put a little bit on, line these up. I've seen people use uh, like tiling spacers as well. But since this is going to be on the very front of my beef briefcase and not just sit in the front of my yard, uh, I just want it to be a little more accurate. And I am really taking my time with this. I could probably do it quicker, but I don't see a good reason to. If I'm going to try to do it fast, and I'm just going to be trying to get it over with, and I'm not going to enjoy it, I'm probably going to screw something up.
Come on, you're gonna stick. I never have this much trouble off camera. Hmm. Huh? That's sad. There's another one. All right, so here is the encapsulation process. Here's a two-part epoxy I'm going to be using on SolarWindsUSA.com. It's called Solar Epoxy UV Encapsulant. Uh, it's supposed to be the best one. They say that uh, if you encapsulate a cell with this stuff, you can wrap it around your finger and it won't even crack the cell. Um, I'm not going to try that, and that's a pretty bold claim, but it's not cheap. It's uh, $30 for a 16-ounce bottle, which will do a 3-foot by 3-foot panel. Uh, but this stuff is pretty amazing. But apparently the vibrations from a washing machine should be sufficient to get out a lot of the air bubbles and allow this mixture to fill into some of the cracks. So far, I'm pretty happy with this. I haven't screwed anything up yet. turns out. Alright, so the solar panel is done. It's kind of flexible. And it's the perfect thickness that I needed. So, now I'm going to check it. It should be uh, 10 volts, because I've got 20 cells, half a volt a piece. That's what they're rated at. So, I've got my multimeter set on a 50 volt DC max and let's see if I can hold this while I test it uh, how are you going to see this my negative and my positive and it's actually it's 30 volts Wow, I'm not sure how that happened. I, I, I guess maybe uh, once there's a load on it, it'll bring that down, but I didn't think it brought it down more than 50%. It should only bring it down maybe 30%. So I guess I should have about 20 volts when I'm done, which is good because um, the car jack that I'm using can take anywhere between uh, 8 to 24 volts. So if, I, if the load brings it down to about 20 to 24, then... I should be good and this should work perfectly. I don't have a way to test the amperage because my multimeter only measures up to 150 milliamps and this is supposed to be 1.24 amps. So it's 1200 amps that uh, it's 1100 milliamps more than it can actually test. But it works. Very happy about it. And the overflow from this encapsulation stuff, after three hours, it was very, very hard. So I took a razor blade to it then, and I cut it out around the edges. And that was last night. So now, it's, um, it's very hard. I like it. This is really cool stuff. I'm definitely going to use this same encapsulation method in the future. And it's actually overcast now. I don't know how bright it looks to you on the camera, but 
the sun's back there somewhere and it's it's honestly it's not that bright and I tested it in the house under a very weak light uh, in my dining room I only had one light on on the side and even then it was measuring at 15 volts so I'm surprised it actually went all the way up to 30 so that's all for now I'm finishing up the top half of the case and I will show you how I put it together So here's my program for my very top layer. And here I'm engraving it to give it a stained oak look. This is just regular oak plywood. And with the engraving it really brings out the grain, gives it a nice contrast and then perfect orange color that I'm looking for. Okay, so here's the plan. I just finished cutting all the uh, slices to the top half. And the first three layers, four layers, are going to be the um, same way. They're going to be function the same way as the bottom. It's just going to be the ring so that when I open up the case, this will be my inside. So I'm building it from the bottom up as if you're actually looking at the top of the case. Next, I have the solar panel ring holder. This is where the solar panel actually fits right inside. Is nope. Got that wrong. Come to next. This is the board so that when you're looking, when you open up the case, this is what you'll see. And of course this this won't remain black. I've got a lot of sanding to do and I've got that material that I bought, the leather like vinyl material. Then next is this piece. Then my solar panel came out to be the same thickness as one of these plies of wood. And then I'm just going to use some hot glue to hold it into place. Because I want this to be removable. I don't want it to be too permanent in case I feel like upgrading cells or something, new technology comes out. I don't want to have to break this whole thing apart. And these two pieces. Um, I haven't laser cut the holes and the flat wood that's behind this, but these two pieces here are going to actually go down and into the box. But for now, I'll just leave them right here. And then my cover. Like so. So, now I've got the top half of my briefcase. And this is what the engraving came out when I tried to color it. I'm not super thrilled with the variation in um, hues and colors I've got here. This, it barely looks like it did anything. Over here it's much too dark. And this is just way too much of a contrast. You can tell there was an obvious unintended burn there. So I haven't really decided what I want to do with that yet. But anyway, everything is cut and now I've just got some woodworking to finish up on. And I plan on rounding off the insides, adding a nice bevel to it with the router. So, let's see how that looks when I'm done. Okay, so now I'm sanding off some of the rough edges from uh, when the guy at Home Depot cut it. I laser cut off most of it, but there was still some of them on. Some of this is flaking up. I want it to sit as evenly as possible. So I have my uh, 80 grit felt sander pad. So I just cut off as much of that as I deem necessary. start gluing. Um, it's probably a good idea to not glue this to the base there. I think. I'll just use some of this paper I have laying around. I can always sand this off if it does stick. Okay. 
the same thing as before. You'd think I'd be a little bit better at this, but I'm not so sure. do any dowel rods this time because it's only four plies. I would have to cut the dowel rod down. If you have to count, or not the dowel rod, but the little, um, what's it called? Not the rabbit joint, whatever the thing is called. These things. If I'm going to have to cut that down, then it's probably not worth using. That's what I'm thinking. Since I laser cut all these, I assume they will fit together perfectly. They should all be the same exact size, same everything. I'm going to do something that I should have done the first time. Just use a square to level it all off. Make sure it's nice and plumb. Because this is only a half inch thick, there's a little bit of flex in the wood. So even though they're cut the same exact size, the wood can still flex in here and bow in or out. Alright, it's looking pretty good. Except for over here, this one's not lining up right. It's only off by a tiny bit. I'm more concerned with how the inside lines up because I can take my band saw to the outside or my um sander. This thing. A little belt sander. This thing is awesome. Very handy. Got it at a yard sale for five bucks years ago. Paper towels. Wipe the glue off. So I finished laser cutting the little holes in here, so those are in the right spot, and I'm just going to use this as a weight. 
Uh, I guess we'll do it this way. there you have it again it's um it's only in the first stages so it's very ugly it'll look good later though for me it'll look good in uh, about a day for you to look good in probably about three more seconds okay well I'm still not completely finished but I have the bottom down there and then the top well, sitting on top and I use some uh, clear silicone caulking to Sit the uh, solar panel in place. So now the cover is going to sit right on top of this, just right here. Like so. And I routed the inside, and then I think I'm going to paint this black to give it a nice contrast, make it actually look like a border around the solar panel. And I still haven't cleaned up the sides yet, they're pretty ugly. So just a little bit more work. Alright, here's another update. I'm adding the oil-based polyurethane to the top of this. I'm already on a second coat. So that's starting to look a little better. A little more lustrous and it brings the color out. And over here I'm filling in all uh, the holes with some wood filler. I don't know how well this is going to come out on the camera, but all the pieces that didn't line up just right and my sander couldn't hit them because they're a little bit lower than the rest of the plies uh, they're still black from the burn and I didn't like the color or the feeling of it I want it to be as smooth as possible so I'm just filling in all those gaps okay so now I've got the hinges in in the back so I have the holes pre-drilled and I now have something resembling a briefcase. So I'm very happy with it so far. This is all dried and glued into place, or siliconed. I have my second coat over here, and actually it's dry now, so I can give it a fine sand and put on a third coat. It doesn't even really need a sanding. I, um, I don't have a paintbrush for this. Well, I do, but I don't want to waste my good one because it's oil-based. So I just took a piece of paper towel and I soaked it in it and I dripped it all around the edges until it was really thick and then I just kind of like smoothed it out with this and I shook it a little bit <clears throat> until it was a nice even coating and that way you prevent the bubbles that you get from brushing it on with a coarse brush or a foam brush or anything else like that. Uh, so that's looking better so I, I want to get, because this is the front, I'm probably going to wind up putting about six coats on it and I only have two right now, it's maybe 45 minutes in between coats so that'll take a little while. The reason I'm coating this one separately from this is so that I don't get the polyurethane on my plexiglass. So once this is all done, I can glue it in place on top of this, sand down the edges because this one is still rough and laser burned so that it can match these. I filled in all the holes on the sides with wood filler and I'm still not sure how I'm going to coat this. I know I'm going to use the polyurethane but before that I don't know if I want to stain it or just polyurethane it and see how it brings the color out. I haven't really decided yet. So anyway, yippee, this looks nice. I'm getting all the holes pre-drilled and setting everything up so that once I do um, coat the sides, it'll fill in the holes a little bit. And then I'll fill in the holes with uh, Gorilla Wood Glue. And then I'll screw them into place to keep it really tight. Um, what else? I got some rivets for my locks. And I tested a piece right here with an eighth inch rivet and um, I think a sixteenth inch drill. So I pre-drilled it and I shoved the rivet through and that's very that's really tight. I couldn't get it out with anything. So that's what I'm gonna use for the locks.
All right, here it is so far. It's not quite done. Um, my opposite lock for the right side broke, so uh, I guess that shipped to me not working very well. So I didn't add that one in. So right now I only have the one lock that's working. Handle works great. Solar panel works great. Here's my positive and negative lines for my uh, solar panel. But I don't want the inside to stay wood. So I bought this liner. Uh, it cost me like $8 for this entire sheet from Joanne Fabrics. And it's like a vinyl, but it, it kind of feels like leather. And it's kind of cushiony, so I like that. So now we're going to go out and laser cut my liner. Alright, so here's my liner, all cut out. Just want to make sure it fits. Everything looks the right size. It looks a little big, but I'm thinking once I silicone it down into place and I squeeze the corners down, it should be perfect. Really hoping. This is the only, um, I guess, flange to it that I cut a little extra long because I want that to wrap around and be glued into place up here so that you don't see this crack in the hinges when you're looking into the case. <clears throat> so that's about a half inch too long, but I'm just gonna glue it and, well, I don't know, maybe I'll, I guess I'll mark it and cut it once I glue everything else down and into place. All right. So that fits. Got my clear silicone here. Now, I'm just going to have to smear it around a little bit. Alright, so the, thing I, the way I think I'm going to do this is take a business card and wrap it in some paper. Now I should be able to smear it around nice and smooth.
So I don't want any bumps on the bottom once I'm done. This isn't working super well. Alright, good enough. I think. looking at my corners and making sure I have it lined up and centered as well as possible. And I think not the most. Alright, that should be it right there. Now I've got this piece of wood I cut out. <clears throat> I can use this to smooth it out a little bit more. Looks pretty good. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go around the corners or the edges and glue that into place as well. Okay, so I finished the liner. So that came out pretty good. I decided to use some double sticky tape around the top edges instead of um, the silicone so it wouldn't squeeze out the top at all. Um, and I've got this taped onto the back. And one more thing I want to show you. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it on now or a little bit later. I cut this off of a uh, the inside of a three ring binder. Actually it was the outside of a three ring binder. So that's going to go in here. That gives me uh, all of this space, saving stuff, uh, notepads, another notepad, pens, anything else I can think of, um, headphones or earphones, earbuds. And then when the back is glued into place, and somehow I'm going to latch this so that when I unlatch it, it'll come forward, and there's space on the back for papers and whatever else. Then my phone is going to have a little pocket right here for it to sit. And the backup battery is going to sit right here. So my phone will be able to slide in, all my stuff there, iPad, uh, anything else I can think of down there. And one more thing. And here I have my 16 gigabyte thumb drive, and I added a little clip on it, and it snaps in right here. I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for yet, but I'm sure it'll come in handy. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been the making of my solar panel briefcase. If you want to click on the screen right now, you will see the final product and my backup battery and how it actually functions. Thanks for watching.